Hey guys, uh, good morning. It is my turn uh, for Testimony Tuesday. And for those of you that know me know how much I love to talk. And so believe it or not, this was actually, um, I was kind of nervous about doing this. Um, but I knew it's something that the Lord was calling me to do. And so here I am. Uh, so my name is Erin Beck. I am the Director of Early Childhood Ministries at the Church of Clayton Crossings and um, co-leader of uh, Moms and Munchkins group. And so I, um, I'm going to kind of do something a little bit different this morning. Um, I actually want to sort of do this backwards from the way most people usually do it. Um, I don't know how much time you have to watch this video. And if I'm being honest, I don't know how long it's going to be. Uh, because I want to make sure to say the things that I feel the Lord um, leading me to. But the one thing that's the most important um, that I want you to hear, I'm going to say first, just in case you only have three minutes. Um, when I actually sat down uh, to get my thoughts together to write down my testimony, I was um, putting in there milestones, you know, things that are really important that have happened in my life. And no matter how great or no matter how hard those things were to write down, I kept seeing a theme. Um, and I don't know where you are in your life right now. I don't know if you believe um, in Jesus or if you believe in him, but you're not necessarily a follower of Jesus. Um, or if you've had bad experiences with uh, Jesus people or church people or just church in general. I'm not sure where you are right now. Um, if you're in a great place or a hard place in life, um, what I want to say is um, that Jesus kept showing up in every single part of my story, and he was pursuing me every single step of my journey. Every single time I wrote something down, right beside it, I wrote Jesus. There he was. He was in every single piece and part of my story. So I just want to say that to you. I don't know where you are in life, but I want you to know that the Lord is constantly pursuing you. He is constantly after you um, because he loves you so much. Um, and so it's just funny. I will encourage you to look back over your story as well. And um, it's just really cool to see how the Lord is always working even when uh, you don't know it and may not be aware of it, he's there. Every single step of the way, he's there. There's actually a song that came to my mind as I was writing things down. And um, Dolly Parton actually helps uh, Zach Williams sing, um, There Was Jesus. And if you've never heard that song, I encourage you to look it up because that was just the theme for me this morning. It's like, oh, I went through this stage. It was really hard, but there was Jesus. I went through this stage and it was really beautiful and great. There was Jesus. There he was preparing me every step of the way for where I am right now. And um, so I just want to say, like, um, I don't know what your experience has been um, with the Lord, but I would absolutely love to either introduce you to him or help you be able to get closer to him if you already have decided to be a follower of Jesus. So that's what I want to start with. Um, because that's the most important thing. I don't want you to have to wait however long this video is going to be. I don't want you to have to wait until that to the end if you can only watch for four minutes. Um, that's, that's what I want you to hear the most loud and clear because that's the most important. So um, I'll kind of start from the beginning for me. Um, I was actually raised in Clayton Garner area, which is unlike most of the people that are around this these these parts now. Um, I was actually raised here, um, and I was raised in a Christian home. Um, my parents actually um, separated and divorced when I was pretty young, and so I don't remember them being together. But um, I had a very involved mom and dad who always wanted to make sure that we were in church, and so we were. Um, I accepted Christ um, at nine or ten years old at uh, Mount Moriah Baptist Church, uh, kind of in between Garner and Clayton, um, and we were in church every Sunday. It didn't matter who we were with, mom or dad, we were there, um, and so I developed that habit from a young age, um, making sure that I was in the Lord's house weekly, um, and I'm so very thankful 
for that um, because we had um, very influential people, influential people on both uh, sides of our family. So that was um, that was really good for us to be able to start out with. But um, you know, I recognized pretty early on that the Lord gave me eyes to be able to see people who were kind of um, struggling, maybe, and on the on the outside of things, people who were looking for their place or. Um, who needed someone to see them. Um, I, I usually tend to find people who may be overlooked, if you will. Um, the Lord's just given me eyes to be able to see people for the way that he made them. And so maybe they were in the middle of a mess or um, um, maybe outcast or I'm not sure, but people who were searching for things, those were always the people that I was looking for, not the people who had it all together. Um, people who looked like they had it all together sort of scared me a little bit. I was looking for the other people. Um, I felt like those were my people always. Um, and, and in that, I see Jesus too. Because um, even from a very young age, he was, he was calling me um, to lead. Um, and to lead a group where I would constantly be pulling people in who were uh, maybe on the outside. And so, but I didn't see that then. I didn't know that then. And so, um, even my sister can tell you the Lord made me um, a bossy kid. I'm uh, sort of a bossy person. I always have been. And so, she can uh, be very honest with you about that. Um, the Lord made me like that from day one. Um, <laughs> and so, um, even there, there's Jesus in that too. Because as, as annoying as that probably was to my mom and dad and my sister when I was younger um that's how the Lord built me and made me was to um kind of um coordinate things and pull things together and um tell people what to do I guess um and so that's just the way that that he made me and um thankfully I am trying to use that gift to glorify him um these days even though I'm sure I did not always do that um so I would say probably at about 16 or 17 years old, for some reason I thought in life that there was something um, that was going to be greater uh, and, and cooler um, than the Lord. And so I just kind of went out searching um, to fill this space that I had. I just felt like there was a hole and it was empty and I just needed to fill it. And I'll be honest with you, um, I thought that other people um, we're going to be able to fill that spot. And so um, I started uh, hanging around with uh, lots of different people. Like I said, I was very interested in lots of different people. Anybody who lived differently than me, I was interested in them. Um, and so I sort of lost myself in that. And um, I really thought that I was going to find something that would help um, fill that hole, I guess, that was in my heart that now I know is a God-sized hole, and um, only He can fill that. Um, because I tried to fill it with relationships, whether it was relationships with um, guys or friends or um, jobs, different things like that. Um, I always thought that I could find something that was going to satisfy me um, the way that the Lord does now. But um, looking back, I really thought that there was going to be something better. So. Um, fast forward to, um, after college, I, um, I kind of, uh, went way wayward, um, and I met someone who lived up in the, um, Winston-Salem area here in North Carolina, and I moved up there. Um, and even though all of the signs were there to tell me that it was not a good relationship for me, um, that... Um, it, it was toxic and it wasn't good. Um, I still thought that, um, I still thought that I could change things myself. And so, um, I ended up getting married. Um, and there was a lot of things that were involved in that marriage that were, um, they were just toxic. That's the best word I can say. There was, um, drugs and alcohol, emotional abuse, um, I actually suffered two second trimester losses when I was in that marriage, which um, were so devastating. And at that point in my life, I was far from the Lord. 
um, I knew him, um, but it's amazing um, when I had those losses. I lost a set of twins at 16 weeks, and then I also lost a baby girl at 20 weeks. Um, it's amazing how the Lord just drew me back into him even during that time, even when I was not, I was not um, faithful in attending church, praying. Um, I just wasn't doing anything to try and be close to Jesus. I still can look back at all of that pain that I went through in that relationship and those circumstances and see the Lord there because that was definitely a deep, dark time in my life and the Lord was still there with me. I can look back so vividly remembering moments um, when I knew that I still had the hope that I had in the Lord. Um, even though I wasn't actively pursuing him at all, I was actively pursuing um, what I thought my life should be, um, which was so very wrong. Um, but that, that marriage eventually um, led to infidelity and so um, we parted ways um, in about 2006, 2005, 2006. And um, thankfully, right before that happened, um, I um, found a job. Actually, a job found me up in the Winston-Salem area because I wasn't around any of my family or friends at that point. Um, all of my family and friends were still here um, in Garner, Clayton area. And... Um, so I found this lady, or this lady found me. Her name was Linda Leonard. And um, she gave um, me a chance to um, work for this amazing um, company and agency. And um, she gave me this experience that I needed to be able to do what I'm doing exactly right now. Um, in that job, I became a consultant um, for teachers and um, just was able to be able to help people. I gained all of this knowledge and these skills to be able to um, do the job that I'm doing right now. And so here's another example of um, the Lord being there and going before me, even when I was just... Um, as one of my friends says, stuck and stupid. I was still stuck and stupid in that point in my life, but the Lord was still there um, to be able to um, have Linda Leonard um, give me a chance on that job. And I stayed in that job for almost 10 years. And I was in that job um, when my first marriage um, collapsed. And it helped me um, be able to get through because I met some really amazing people there. And so, um, you know, the Lord was setting all of that up for me, even though it's amazing when I sat down to write out my story, like Jesus was there every single step of the way and lined me up for right now, for what's happening right now in my life. And so, um, in 2007, I met this dude, um, and he was pretty cool, but, um, he was almost too cool. Like, I was sort of waiting for a while. Um, you know, sometimes you kind of just wait for the other shoe to drop. Like, this cannot be, this can't be really who this, this guy is. He can't really be this awesome. Um, and that is, uh, my now husband, David. And I'll just tell you, he really is that awesome. He really is. Um, none of us are perfect, but he's about as close um, as you can get. And so um, there again, I just feel like Jesus was there saying like, there you go. Um, because when David and I met, um, both of us had been raised in Christian homes. Um, neither one of us um, were actively attending church, but... Um, I think we both had that desire, and so um, we got married in 2010. We were living in a little town called Moxville, North Carolina then, and um, we actually decided that we needed to find a church, and so there was a lady that was at his work who invited us um, to this church. Then it was called Journey Church, 
And we thought, okay, you know, both of us were Southern Baptists. Let me just say that. We were both Southern Baptists, and so we were used to the choir robes and the um, hymnals and all that kind of stuff. And so we got all fancied up, and uh, we went to, it's actually called Rescue House now, but it was Journey Church then. And so um, we went in, and, um, and it was way different than any church we'd ever been in. And so... Uh, we were just kind of amazed at how quickly we felt to be a part of that church. And um, just during worship, um, and it, that was way back in the day when uh, Pastor Matt Hudson, he was the pastor, he actually would um, play in the band, he would play guitar, and then preach. And so um, we just thought, what in the world is this place? Like, this is just crazy. Um but it was there that I fully surrendered my life to Christ. Um, they just did church so differently. And um, it was just all about Jesus. It was all about pointing people to Jesus. And, you know, at that point in my life, I thought, I can do this. This is way more simple than I was thinking you know, that it should be. But it was at Rescue House Church that I met um, two very important people in my life. And um, I rededicated my life in July of 2011 and was baptized again. And um, I just, um, I just felt like I was starting to step into my calling then. Um, Julie Miller was there then, and she was over at Children's Ministries there, and Pastor Matt Hudson. And both of them saw something in me that I had not quite seen yet in myself. Um, they saw leadership potential in me and the potential for, for actually doing ministry. And um, I have to be honest, at first when they, you know, talked to me about that, I really still was not sure about that. Um but I wanted to be open-minded to it. And so I was in leadership um, at Rescue House uh, for a while in the children's ministry. Um, and then we, um, after we got pregnant with our second child, we decided to move back to the Garner Clayton area. And that was in about 2013. And we were very sad to leave our church because um, it was a huge part of our life. My husband, David, and I, we were um, we were so invested there um, and still are to this day. Like that church, it has our heart. It really does um, and always will because of, um, you know, that was the place that I came back to meet the Lord um, and just fully surrendered. And so when we moved back here um, in 2015, uh, we kind of visited around churches because it is hard finding a church. I don't know about you guys, but when you move to a place, I know many people who may be watching this, um, it's hard to find a church. It really is. Um, and so I can't imagine like not necessarily being a church person. Like it's hard, even if you are a church person, uh, to be able to find a place that fits with yourself, your spouse, your kids, um, whatever it is. But the first day we walked in the Church of Clayton Crossings um, in 2015, I knew that that was our spot. Immediately, I knew. And um, I, you know, I very quickly got involved in the preschool ministry because that's where my heart is. Um, and it's always been, preschool has always been uh, where my heart is. And so um, I. Um, took over uh, the Sunday preschool then in 2015 pretty quickly. And um, then after that, Moms and Munchkins was born. Um, and so, you know, as I was writing all this stuff down, I'll say it again, like every single piece and part of my journey, um, the Lord was there. He really was. And until I sat down and wrote it out, like I know that there was specific pieces and parts that the Lord was there, obviously, but like, even in the smallest and hardest times, he was there and he was constantly pursuing me and constantly rescuing me from my own stupid self. Um, because I've made so many stupid mistakes. Um, and I'd like to say that I, I wish I hadn't done that. 
Um, but that's my story. You know, that was my journey um, that I was on. But um, no matter what was going on in my life, the Lord was there. And he was always um, rescuing me and pulling me out um, of either bad decisions or just bad circumstances that are happening. So I don't know where you are today. You know, those of you that are listening to this, I don't know where you are. I don't know what you've been through. I feel like each and every one of us have been through something that's hard. Maybe what's hard is happening right now for you, or maybe it's happened a little bit ago and you're, um, you're trying to move through it and move past it. I just want to let you know that, um, God can be part of that story. He really can because each and every one of us were made um, with a god size hole in our heart and no matter what we have that we try to fill it with it's never going to be enough it never will we'll either try more of that thing or move on to something else um, and I felt like that I could find that thing um, and I couldn't um, because there were many many years in my life um, I spent searching um, for something and um, I already had it I didn't know it um, but I just needed to um, pursue my relationship with Jesus more and so as soon as I started doing that that hole that I had was filled um, and I'm gonna tell you what that's an amazing feeling it's a feeling like no other it really is um, there's so much peace in that um, and reassurance and hope if you take a look around what's happening in the world these days man it is so overwhelming it is so overwhelming um and it makes us all want to run and hide that's what's happened in this last year during this pandemic it's been so easy to hide because the world is such a scary place right now but i just want to tell you there's hope in jesus there really is and it's not anywhere else it isn't anywhere else that we look um so I would love to introduce you to Jesus or help further your relationship with Jesus. That's what my heart is for. And so if I can help you do that in any way, shape, or form, please let me know. And if you have listened this long for 22 minutes, you get a gold star because um, that's a really long time. But um, I just want to make sure that you heard the most important part of most important piece and part at the beginning and at the end. Um, and it's Jesus.